All right, another live stream, another opportunity to ask any and all art marketing related questions that you have that you're stuck on. Um, we've been doing these sessions sort of as um, an open form of office hours. Office hours are in, like our internal um, sessions with our customers in which we try to get you unstuck, moving, uh, uh, encourage you uh, uh, to keep going, right? Uh, 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 and, and, and ultimately, grow an art business, grow a photography business, because we know it's not hard, right? And George, good on you, man. That was so fast. I mean, I feel like I've been live for like six seconds and already you got a question, which makes me very happy. Um, so I find that I attract more photographers on IG than I do collectors. How do I address the right audience for buying art? Such a great question, because what ends up happening inevitably to all of you guys is all artists, um, what's up, Perry? All artists follow other artists and all photographers follow other photographers and then you just have a bunch of artists and photographer followers one thing i will say about that though is having seen like over the years like you know a lot a lot a lot of our customers develop like huge audiences of artists and photographers you guys might have a business to launch as a result of that so it's not necessarily a bad thing right like you know it it, it it's like it's like that thing but there's no such thing as bad press right there's no such thing as bad followers unless you paid for them and they're completely nonsense hold on ask a question ask your question i will answer i will answer um just post in a comment on instagram so everyone knows this is an open session i'm trying to solve as many of your guys problems as i can uh, uh answer any questions that you might have but to go to to follow up more with george like you know the 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 good thing about instagram the good thing about these algorithms which just keep getting scarier and scarier and scarier by the way on how good they are i mean elon musk came out today and said that by 2029 which is what five years that ai um will be smarter than every human being alive so that's terrifying what does that mean i don't know could be awesome as well uh tbd on that but where i'm going with that george is like you know, when you post a combination of your work and you post a combination of what makes you interesting, what makes you tick, um, what, you know, what you do in your spare time, the algorithm knows how to go out and find the folks that are interested in that. Okay. And it won't always be photographers. And what I inevitably find is like, you know, you're worried about your attracting photographers early on. You can't worry about it. You can't sweat it. You just have to stay consistently marketing. And when you do that, the algorithm eventually will reward you, right? Like, you know, one of the one of the interesting things that I see in the, the, the art storefronts Instagram feed is like, I am aware of every single solitary art consultant on the planet, okay, that is doing anything even remotely close to the service that we're offering because Instagram knows that's the content we're creating and it brings it brings those folks in who I totally want to see and I totally want to know about because we might want to hire some of those folks. So don't let Instagram discourage you, George. Keep rocking on it, um, you know, and and the algorithm will end up taking care of you. And for those of you guys that are just joining, having an open Q&A session so any of you guys can ask any questions you have about your art business, where it is, things you're struggling with, um, you know, pricing, niche selection, branding, gallery situations, in-person shows and theirs, uh, Facebook and Instagram ads, you shouldn't be running them. Uh, print giveaways, more than happy to discuss all of it. And one thing, one cool thing that I did um, yesterday, um, you know, is brought a customer on and talked to a customer. And I realized like there's there's sometimes where I individually coach, coach customers. It's not like a part of what I do, but every once in a while I do it because I enjoy it. And I've got a number of customers that I think I could bring on, um, you know, that that have their own insight, are struggling with the exact same thing you guys are struggling with, or maybe at a different state of their business. Uh, but that likely, you know, have stories that might help you guys. So I'm thinking about doing a bunch more of that. Um, yeah, NFTs, any, uh, you know, anybody that's getting anything to do with NFTs, it is a scam, okay? No NFTs are, are they're a real thing and they're cool, but they're, it's not, it's not gonna help your art business, not in the slightest, okay? Art by Salcido says, sales are slow. Anything you suggest to increase? It's so, you know, the one thing that the art and photography business is not, and I wish it was, certainly not for like vast majority of artists, is ever consistent. Salcido, it's art by Salcido. It's never, ever consistent. Peak, valley, peak, valley, peak, valley, right? You know, a lot of what we teach is just to get ready for the fourth quarter, for the last quarter of the years, because that's when the, the, the most art sales happen. But I, I, I encourage you not to, to get bogged down by it. You know, I had a many moons ago, I had a retail business and 
um, that I ran for like a year and a half, miserable year of my life, let me just tell you, because I had to keep the doors open seven days a week. Um, and I barely had any uh, uh, employees. And my business was always up, down, up, down, up, down. And you realize that it's just, it's just sort of the nature of the beast um, and that you just have to keep marketing consistently and you can't let it get you down. Um, that's sort of just the nature of sales sometimes in general, um, which is which is how it goes. Yeah, was I pronouncing it right? Salcido? If it's Latin, I don't know if it is Latin or not. Um, I like it. It's a good last name. Okay, do you think be buried in a coffin is to keep energy from being transmitted into the atmosphere? Um, I'm not Todat or whatever your name is. I don't, dude, what, what are you talking about? I don't have any idea of being buried in a coffin. Um, unless you're doing that for a marketing gimmick, in which case, good on you. But for everyone that's just joining, uh, any questions you guys have, I'm answering. Um, try to be as helpful as possible. This is one of the things that we do for our customers all the time. We have like nine sessions like this on a weekly basis. Um, and obviously, if you're a customer and you have a question, uh, of course, happy to answer those as well. Um, big, big last couple of weeks on Instagram. Um, I can I can say that much conclusively. It's been it's been pretty wild to see that more and more posts more and more reels on our account on our customers account are being shown to people that do not follow you so if ever there's been a time to hit your instagram marketing really really hard now is that time um what an incredible time to do it because this competition ushered in by TikTok, notwithstanding that the you know the senate just passed a bill for TikTok to divest itself or be banned from the app store um, it goes to the House, or rather they passed it in the House and it goes to the Senate. So we'll see what happens in the Senate. Um, I don't know if that's going to get passed or not. But right now there's genuine competition in social media land and we all stand to benefit as a result of it. So I say all that to say just encouragement, encouragement, encouragement on you guys and your continued marketing on Instagram. All right. Brittany Vogelart says, can you look at my site, please? I have my paper print self-fulfilled. For each painting, I have them linked uh, and you have a toggle. It's not intuitive for people to toggle best practices. Um, Brittany, if you're a customer with us, don't worry about your website. You don't have a website problem. You have a marketing problem. You know, everyone likes to, likes to think that there's, there's something wrong with the website or something's throwing people off or, you know, it's preventing commerce from going down, but you know, tens of thousands of dollars a day, um, are being transacted and some days, many more every single solitary day on our storefront sites. And so it's not, it's, it's not the website. It's almost never the website. Like if, if you're having a problem, um, and people are confused and they call you, you know, more often than not, that's someone that's just not tech savvy and they want you to they want you to help them get them over the line anyway. They like want to talk to you, which is the best thing that you can do. So if you're with us, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, you know, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, photography by Shane, what kind of account do you have? Um, it absolutely gives you the breakdown. I mean, both of them 100% give you the breakdown, right? So it's like if you look in your insights report and you have to have a business or a creator account to be able to do this. If you look at insights and you go to accounts reach, which is this top one over here, right? It shows you by content type, posts, reels, live videos, stories, and videos, exactly how many people that you your content reaches when you are a follower uh, to your followers, which is the blue part, and then your non-followers, and it gives you numbers, right? Like for us, it's crazy. Like we're reaching 62,000 with our posts and we're reaching 27,000 uh, with our reels. And those are organic shown to people that do not follow our storefronts. So, you know, at a, at a smaller scale, like we're marketing like crazy because obviously I have a whole team and you guys are, you know, a team of one, um, you, you know, uh, uh, the posts are getting as much action as the real. So you really need to be doing both. I got distracted there for a second. Sorry. So very, very important. Um, Jimmy Sola says, when should an artist start selling? Um, there's no, there's no magical formula that works for everyone, Jimmy. Some people sell the first time they show. Some people will show and show and show and not sell anything and have to try a new style because the style that they have is not working. That's not what plagues most, art, most artists. What I find plagues most artists and photographers is you don't ever do any marketing and you don't get the work in front of enough eyeballs to know whether or not the work will sell. You know, one of the reasons that I love the shows in their circuit or doing a farmer's market or doing a brewery or, you know, going gangster and gorilla and setting up a table somewhere in a public space without even asking permission is, you get the art in front of eyeballs, you have conversations and you find out, right? You know, you find out officially, are, are these people interested in my art or, or, you know, do, or, or do they not, and they're not going to buy it. And and then you can ask questions, right? Which I think is, is, is huge, right? Um, that's awesome. Perry, Perry saying he donates 20,000 a year to philanthropy through G clays and originals. Um, and his accountant has told him in the past few years, uh, that because of art Basel and the corruption associated with it, write-offs, 
uh, that an artist can only write out the cost of goods and supplies on the sale. That's got to be nonsense, Perry. There's no way. Get a new accountant. Those are absolutely business materials. And if you're making official donations, that, that should be okay. But uh, there might be a carve out for art, probably called the Hunter Biden rule. Um, that's terrible. That's terrible that that works that way. You should 100% get the write off. And, you know, I do find that if you can do it intelligently, okay, and there's a big difference between intelligently and not, but donating pieces that get raffled off especially on like really, really good charities, especially if you can donate, like I find the higher dollar amount you go, the more prestige they give you. And sometimes they even let you talk about it or whatever. It'd be a fantastic way to acquire collectors because everybody at those things, um, you know, everybody at those things tends to be high net worth individuals, which is, which is awesome. It's how charity works. Um, photography by Shane wants to talk about carousels. So here, here's the thing, right? And ah, do I still have the video? I think I still have the video somewhere. I'm going to see if I can pull it up. So, you know, what we have to go off of is a combination of what the official mouthpiece tells us. And in this case, this is awesome, by the way. I don't mean it's a derogatory term. You know, all the time that guy, Instagram. This guy, um, Adam Osseri, is the head of Instagram. And every once in a while, he'll come on. I highly recommend everyone follows his account, by the way. It's at Mosseri, M O S S E R I. Is it M O S S E R I? M O S S E R I. Yeah. Um, he is the head of Instagram. And really what his job is, in addition to everything else he does, is to parse what the Instagram algorithm actually is saying. And in his latest video, he specifically highlighted the importance of carousels. But the 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 way the way to think about it, the way that I like to think about it is like everything that we create, okay, on Instagram, whether it's an individual photo or whether it's a reel of photos or whether it's a, a, a reel of anything, or whether it's a carousel post or whether it's a live broadcast, whatever it is, all of that content effectively goes into a warehouse. Okay. It goes into Instagram's warehouse and Instagram has a warehouse for single image posts. Instagram has a warehouse for carousel posts. Instagram has a warehouse for video posts. Instagram has a warehouse uh, for reels and it's Instagram's job to say, I need to keep people on my platform having the best time ever. So I'm going to grab from these warehouses as I see fit, okay, to create what is called the feed, right? And you look at the feed and as you scroll this thing, you know, you've got, okay, individual image post, okay, carousel post, okay, real, okay, individual image post, okay, a carousel, right? So what Instagram's job is to curate the best experience possible drawing from these warehouses. So what's the easiest thing to do on Instagram? Create an individual image post. So do you know what Instagram's warehouse is the most full? Individual image posts. So when you create carousels, you're competing against less people because by nature, they're a little bit harder to do. So yes, you have to do the carousels in, in, in addition to the individual images. It doesn't mean the individual images are not important. Um, Nosseri just came out and said that 50% of the experience on Instagram is still individual image posts, but you're competing. The warehouse of Instagram's images to, fit, to put into that feed is 100% full. So yes, you need to do more carousels. Uh, get them to do as many times as possible. The carousels are, have been huge for us, and I think it's a, I think it's a great, great idea, right? Yeah. So I, I know most people have a different insights report because you don't have a business account and that's, that's sort of annoying. I don't know if I would switch to a business account or not. There's, I know there's benefits between the business account in terms of analytics in contrast to the creator account. Um, but I know the creator account has benefits too. It's a, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you can, you know, I don't know what you can do about that. Anyway. Um, all right. Dwayne uh, photography says, T -t 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 I realize there's no absolutes, but generally how long should we stick with a price point? starting out before we try lowering prices yeah it's it's immaterial right like if you're not getting feedback on the prices and you're not getting people trying to negotiate with you then not enough people are seeing it and the prices are not your problem like worry about you know and and, and i say this all the time but the vast majority of art and photography that is sold is negotiated on just the truth now you could argue in the web context that's not true but let me tell you in the galleries that is true like more often than not there's negotiation so the early sign that you want is like hey i i see you've got the price for a thousand on that would you take 750 that's when you know you've done the right thing you do not need to worry about your prices being too high too low that being said okay um jeff bezos famously like coined 
you know, coined this statement and it, and it, and it applied to decision making at Amazon. Okay. And he forced all of his employees to say like, Hey, is this decision we're going to make, is it a reversible decision or an irreversible decision? Uh, succinctly, if we decide to do this, can we change our minds and go exactly back 48 hours later? If so, decided immediately. So Dwayne, you can raise your prices and lower your prices at any point in time. And I, and I genuinely think that that's a good idea to do. Um, so don't, don't overstress it. Like you can, you can put it up, you can put it down. Right. Um, and, and, and that's what I would say. Um, people are asking what carousels are. So carousels are these multiple image posts, right. Um, that you can scroll through. So instead of just a single image or a single video in Instagram, it's multiple. Right. And so it really, it gives you an epic ability to be able to storytell, quite frankly, because you can just do these little mini slideshows. And for like a lot of you guys, you know, that are photographers or artists, like you can do, you know, um, getting in place to take the photo, uh, uh, setting up the tripod, uh, uh, a wide shot, and then, you know, a raw shot and then the retouch shot. Right. And you can tell a story that way and you can add in some text. So the carousels are really, really important. Um, and that's what I would say. Jimmy's asking me to take a look at my Instagram account. I'm not going to do that today, but you can normally ask that. I, 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 I am down to do that. Um, Jimmy, what I find is most people are not, you know, are not posting enough. And that's the, that's the biggest problem that they have. You know, you have to, you have to post a lot um, such that you can learn what actually works. You have to post a lot because what we're talking about here, you guys, is it's communication in the modern age. Like we all have to be contrarian about the fact that like as a result of this and everyone holding this up, we can reach people all day, every day across the world. And so it makes sense to becoming an artist at at creating for that space, right? Um, when you create a real thirst, then move it to a story. Will you have both lanes open for the council C to track? Yeah, you will. You will. And I and I highly recommend do that every single solitary time. I mean, like, look at it. It's so easy, you guys, to to have a reel that you created and send it to your story. Like, I mean, the sheer amount of work that that takes is is almost none. How do I got to get out of here? So it's like, if I'm on my profile and I want to put this reel into my story, all I do is click on, on it, chat. hit so the paper airplane, about chat. add to story. You know, you can turn it around, put templates on it, do all the dress up stuff if you want. Uh, we don't normally do that and boom press the button and it's in your story so you should always do that EPT that being said that being said like the stories get the least amount of action and that that just needs to be known it doesn't mean you don't need to do them you still do need to do them uh, it's still important because there's certain people that just like consuming content of their own stories and not really anywhere else so that's that's how i would answer that question um and yes you should have both lanes open to track right like you know again if you go to your insights report, right? And again, your mileage might vary depending on what account you have, right? But I can like look at accounts reach and I can see how many of my stories reach, right? My stories reach 899 of my followers. So you could make an argument for art storefronts that why are you wasting your time, Patrick, on stories? It only reached 899 of your followers in the last seven days. I don't care. If one of those people signs up for art storefronts, okay? If if one of those people saw something that was awesome and is going to sign up for art storefronts in a year, it was just worth it. It was all worth it. So too for you guys. I don't care about you getting 10,000 views on a reel. Tell me someone contacted you today for a commission or tell me someone contacted you today and said, hey, I'm interested in your art. Can we talk about it? That's that's 100,000 times more important than any stupid metric that this application spits out at us. Yes, we want to make data-driven decisions so we understand what's going on on the platform, right? But ultimately, we're always tying things back to what our objective is. And our objective for you guys is to capture email addresses, to have conversations about your art and take commissions and or sell art, right? So that's 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 what I would say. Um, that's the most important thing. And you know, it's it's funny because I, I have a buddy that I, I just chastised the other day for this um, because he's just a typical millennial. And by the way, when you get older, all you want to do is just talk trash on the younger generations. That's what I do. Okay, I don't even know what my generation is. It's so, uh, um, you know, un unnoteworthy. I mean, my generation X. Do, what do we even call ourselves? I don't know. Um, anyway. The millennials have like grown up with stories more so, right? And so a lot of times they'll post all of their content there and then it disappears 24 hours later and they're like, okay, I've done my job. And it's like, no, you've not done your job, okay? None of that stuff now uh, uh, is ever going to be seen by anyone else. And there's people that are going to come to your profile tomorrow that are not going to see any of that. And that's terrible. So you can't just create stories, right? Um, you you got to make sure that all of the rooms on Instagram, the feed, the reels tab, 
and the stories um, are all being fed with your content. Those are all effectively rooms, okay? And you want your art hanging in all three of the rooms because you don't ever know when a buyer is going to walk into one of the rooms or one of the other rooms or none of the rooms or something in between. Um, for those of you guys that are just joining, I'm answering questions, anything art marketing related, anything about art storefronts, all fair game. Uh, more than happy to answer any and all about all of the above. Uh, we've talked about NFTs. Uh, we've talked about nothing but photographers following photographers, uh, which is annoying, but true. Um, we talked a little bit about pricing, but more than happy to answer any and all questions you have about all of the above. Um, you know, this is something that we do on a weekly basis uh, for our customers. We have nine sessions a week like this on Zoom internally for our customers. And what we found is that, you know, it's incredibly beneficial to sit in a group of your peers, see what their questions are and how they might apply to your business and what you can learn. So we love doing this as sort of a taste of like, oh, hey, enjoy these sessions. Feel like you're learning a lot. Your business is, is going in the right direction as a result. Imagine what being on the inside would look like, right? And it's open to customers and non-customers alike. Um, I, I love answering, answering questions and, and giving the best advice that I can. Jimmy Solis says, thank you. Great stuff. Really appreciate that, Jimmy. Um, look, it's hard, you guys. You know, it's really, really hard. Um, yeah, Karen got another question about what a carousel is. So I'll just answer that quickly. Like, you know, a carousel, Karen, is a post like this, you know, instead of a single, by the way, there I am with my green screen. You thought I, you guys thought I was in a, in a coffee shop bar somewhere, but no, I'm not. Um, a carousel is just like this. It's multiple little tiles that you can scroll through and it can be all videos, all photos or any combination in between. So that's what it is. Um, and Facebook doesn't allow them, Karen. I don't believe. I might need to follow up on that. Juan, do you know, does Facebook allow them? Um, not too sure. We'll have to, let me double check. Yeah, will you go Google that? I actually don't even know the answer to that. It's embarrassing. I don't think, I don't think Facebook allows them. Um, okay, so da, 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 got, a, got, a, got a ton of questions. Thanks for saying that, Inner Child Photo Works. We all need to be learning. That's just that's just a whole ball line. Leanne Hansen, can I base my success on, on Reels interactions? You absolutely cannot. Reels interactions are worthless. You can only base them on sales. And Reels interactions are not worthless, okay? They're hugely important and they're awesome to do, right? Uh, because if you create content that creates a good experience in Instagram's eyes, okay? And in Instagram's eyes, all they care about is like, did this content that Leanne Hansen Art created, did it keep people on the platform? Did it look like they were having a good time and that they were happy? Okay, let's take more of our content and show it to more people. So it's important to focus on those, but ultimately you can only base a niche on the cold hard cash hitting your bank account. That is it. That's when you know you've got a niche and you've got a niche that's working, right? Um, so that's what I would say. Um, any advance to not get banned within my niche? I paint abstract female bodies. Such a great question. Um, pasties, duct tape over the sensitive bits, you know, is, is the best way to do it. Although my goodness, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it's like, okay, especially when I'm like a presenter, right. And a lot of times I'll like randomly like grab my phone and throw it on the screen. I, I feel like I'm showing off pornography sometimes for some of the nonsense that Instagram allows. It's like, it's so it's so um, not fair, heavy handed in how they like, and I, and I don't blame them, right? Like what an impossible thing um, to, to do. And Juan, just let me know that on Facebook, you can have up to five photos in a carousel. So Facebook does allow it too, which is awesome. So Karen, you can do it on Facebook. Um, and guys, things change in social media so damn fast, okay, that no one no individual human being, no individual team can truly keep up with all of it. And especially not an artist or a photographer trying to run a business and wearing all those hats. So YouTube is our friend, you guys. Like what is a carousel on Facebook? Go search YouTube. How do I post a carousel on Facebook? Go search YouTube. How do I post a carousel on Instagram? Go post YouTube. Uh, tips, tricks, and hats, hacks for carousel posts on YouTube. You go search these things and YouTube is like the greatest learning search engine because sometimes these features get released and you don't even know about it, right? You don't even know that they that like that they existed, right? Um, okay. Um, please go to insights for a post and then for a reel. Under impressions, you will see it does not break down impressions on reels like it does on posts. Yeah, again, that's just super annoying. I would search YouTube for that too. Um, you know, like, you know, uh, it should give you the data. But at the end of the day, too, you can always look, like, look at the post itself, look at the view count, like you can go to your own, let me get the, the phone back up. One of the things that you can do is you can just go to your own, get out of here, sorry, profile is what I need, which means I got to get out of here. 
you can go to your own profile, right? And you know, you look at your reels tab and you can scroll down and you can see which one's got the most views. And here, here's like, you know, sort of, sort of some of the nuance, like engagement, reach views are all just a proxy for engagement. Meaning Instagram is saying, did people watch this video? Did people like this post? Did they comment on it? Did they share it? Did they send a link to a friend? Did they put it in a direct message? Did they bookmark it and put it into a folder? All of those are proxies for your content doing well. And so it's pretty easy to just scroll through your posts and look like, you know, we posted an alarming rate. My strategy is crazy. You guys don't want to follow this. It would kill you anyway. But, you know, everyone's like, oh, you have 70,000 followers and you only have 1,000 views. Yeah, but I posted 18 reels today and collectively they got pretty insane amount of views, right? But, you know, I can look and see like, okay, I look at this one, it's like 2,600, honestly, five comments, 58 hearts, suck, right? 58 hearts and I use the word suck. That's not good. And I know that that one's good, right? So I might want to save that one and repost that one. So that's something that I like to do kind of like on a regular basis. Um, just kind of give myself a sanity check. Um, with better slowing down in the following tactics, what's, what's the next best thing? Just posting consistently, right? Just posting consistently. That's that's the best thing that you can do. Like all of you guys need to do, you know, all of you guys need to get better at learning how to storytell with this, right? And like one of the things that I think that's awesome is that as you get better and as you spend more time learning, like all of a sudden you're better than 95% of the artists out there, maybe 98%. And then you're competing with a much smaller contingent to get to get your work in front of people. Um, this is an interesting question from Dwayne. Is Joan Allen's five to six year rise the fastest growth you've ever seen? Yeah, that's a good question. Probably close to it. Probably pretty close to it. You know, like the stats are the stats, you guys. Like if you are bringing in over a hundred thousand dollars a year gross as an artist that places you in like the top three percent of artists in the entire United States. Those are the stats, right? So for Jonah, in his case, to be doing having hundred thousand dollar months, you know, six figure months, you know, he's probably in the top one percent already. And so he he did get there very quickly. And some people get there very quickly, and some people it takes a long time. And that's just the nature of the game, right? It's no different than you know, like first time tech entrepreneur starts a billion dollar company like yeah that story is amazing and we all want to glom onto it but let me tell you there's millions that didn't do that right um there's millions that didn't do that so that's what i would say um okay oh that makes me so happy jimmy what a great shout out dude he just says also let me just say thank you because if it wasn't for you and how you break things down i would not have the confidence to post that really that really really makes me happy and um Azalea Archop, if my voice is slowing down, it means your your connection is slowing down. Um, that's what I would say. But yeah, no, it's 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 funny because um, shout out to these two guys, the Vera twins. I, I talked to these two guys because every once in a while I like to have a phone call, but I got contacted by two twins, okay, that are doing like urban inspired art, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, they live in New Jersey and these kids are 29 and they're killing it. Same as Jonah. And I'm like, whoa. So there, there, there are these incredible stories out there, right? Um, okay, photos by Shane. Does Facebook compress more than Instagram? I noticed when I shared my IG reel on Facebook, it notably reduces the quantity. I, IG is more crisp. I'm not aware of that, Shane. Sometimes I think that's that could be down to just like a one-off, um, you know, server speed, connection speed. It's more often your connection speed than I think anything else. But, you know, the reality is, is that, um, you know, uh, 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 with Facebook and Instagram, nothing's ever consistent. <laughs> Things are changing all the time. Um, Inner Child Thought Works. I, I bought that book too, which is Rick Rubin's book on creative storytelling. Um, I've heard that it's awesome. I heard that you should got to listen to it because he obviously narrates the whole thing. And I bought an audio book and like I always do with audio books, I don't ever touch them. Um, I'm rereading Shogun because that doggone TV show. I shouldn't have done it. Shogun just sucks all your time. Um, do I have any other book recommends for storytelling? Okay, that's a great question. Kurt Vonnegut's got a... Um, a YouTube video in which he, on a whiteboard, does story structure. It is so good. It is so good. Inner Child Photo Works. Search Kurt Vonnegut whiteboard or Kurt Vonnegut lecture and watch that thing. That is a spaceship moment, right? Um, a spaceship moment. Yeah, photography by Shannon. I love it. Um, he's trying to learn more by being brave and sharing your face on Instagram. Look, dude, half my face works, brother. Okay? If I can do it, you can do it, right? Um you know, and, and it's not fun, 
and it's not enjoyable. I mean, who likes being on camera? Not, not, not normal human beings. Okay. Not, not normal human beings. Um, but we have to be contrarian, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's how, it's how communication works in today's day and age. And it's like, all of you guys are all so good at selling art in person, face to face. And then you struggle once it's like, okay, well, I've got to turn the camera on. It's like, no, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Just pretend you were talking to somebody face to face, right? That's it. Like, you know, that's, that's, that's the way to talk about it. That's the way to think about it. Um, I would say so. You have to just take it day by day. Um, in my case, alcohol helped early on, I'm not abdicating that, but whatever you had to do to get in your zone, you know, um, to, to, <laughs> to get a little more comfortable and just understand it's supposed to be terrifying at first, right? You know, we were, we were laughing earlier because an art storefronts customer runs webinars for us on Tuesdays and Thursdays as a way of saying like, Hey, you know, here's a no pressure way to talk to a customer. You don't have to be in a room with me because I'm intimidating or whatever. Um, you know, and you know, I tried to teach her how to do the live broadcast last week. And it's like, it's really hard because there's a lot of time where the questions don't come in fast enough, you know, and then you're like, okay, well, what are you going to do with the dead air? And you, and, and, and you have to get good at that. And that takes a bunch of reps and sets, right? Um, none of it, none of it comes so easily, which reminds me, I have to, I should have like a preceded list of questions, right? Um, which photography niches on the ASF, or ASF is doing best right now? Dwayne, it's the wrong kind of question. Even if you knew it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't improve anything that you're doing or help you. I, I found that like trying to figure out your niche and what you're going to do based on what other people are doing is sort of a fool's errand. You can pick up little tidbits here or there, certainly, but everything is just so multivariate. Like, you know, the, the easiest way to find out a niche that's working is to try out a bunch of different ones and show the work off and get feedback and see what works. Like, you know, there's, there's nothing more valuable than the lessons that we can learn on the basis of comparison. Number one, human beings are wired to make decisions on the basis of comparison. But number two, you don't realize what you have or don't have until you have the ability to compare it to something concurrently at the same time, at the same moment in time, right? And it's like, that is, that is, that is such an important thing. So keep trying different things, Dwayne. Um, that's, that's the way to do it. Um, no, you do not need to be professional um, on your reels on Facebook. In fact, there's, there's like sort of a, an active movement right now, an active mantra of sorts to dumb things down okay to dumb things down and make them more lo-fi because people are so sick of this like produced pretty filters uh uh, uh 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 over the top this is not reality stuff that it sort of drives them away like people love the raw and the real right like one of the one of the genius things that kanye west did um as crazy as a dude he is you have to you have to admire his genius sometimes is he paid for a Super Bowl commercial. And then whether he could afford to or not, he said, I couldn't afford to for production value. And so his Super Bowl commercial was a phone holding it in the car with like crappy lighting in his in his in his crazy grill now. And you know, that that did extremely well. It's a perfect example of like people, people crave the real, right? Like, you know, they're more responsive to it. And in a sense, the the less lo-fi and the less you know, uh, 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 produced it is, the more interesting it is because everyone else's stuff is produced, right? Um, so that's 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 what I would say, right? Um, yep, Dwayne, I'm not saying anything about your job. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> you, could, you could just listen and watch on this one and not worry about it, right? It's hard, you know, we, we run live sessions during the day and I love having people in a Zoom where I can like unmute you and bring you on and we can have a longer conversation. But I'm also fully aware of the fact that, you know, like a lot of you guys have day jobs. 80% of my customers have a day job. 80% of the art store friends customers have a day job straight up or have some, some job, right. Um, and don't have the ability, don't have the ability to, to come onto those sessions. And yeah, it is more relatable. Nita, I would say, um, the zoom sessions. So that's what you're saying. You've been in a zoom session. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's definitely more intimate, right. Um, and you know, you, 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 there's, there's certain stuff that you like with a short little text answer, you have to hammer out with your thumbs. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit hard to answer, but I appreciate you guys coming on. I appreciate you guys, um, asking questions because it's it, what keeps this thing moving and going and pumping. Uh, and I'm, and I'm more than happy to answer any and all questions. Like I said, in the, in the future, I have planned bringing on more customers and just like talking to them, um, and sort of coaching them and, 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 you know, hearing, from real artists that are out there doing those things like i'll definitely grab jonah back on one of these but i've got a whole bunch of friends i got my buddy laka who 
who's been with us for like a long time, who I find to be one of the most interestingly talented portrait painters I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and I'm about to light him up because he's stuck in his little world in Canada and he and he's so much bigger than his little world in Canada. Not that there's anything wrong with Canada, but you know, it's not a major market, it's a minor market, especially as talented as this guy is. So I'm gonna bring him on and we're gonna break that down um and and and, and talk about that. And so that's um, you know, that's 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 what this is for, right? And you know, and I think I think the more of these that you can do, the better. I think you guys doing them are awesome. I think you guys doing them, okay, are difficult because you're like, okay, I'm going live and no one's watching, but all you have to do is have a conversation with one person. I think this format, this communication medium, you know, where you're open and you're honest and you're having a conversation and you're like, by the way, I don't know every damn thing, okay? Uh, uh, we're vulnerable. We're not the best company in the entire world. We make a bunch of mistakes, but we're all trying to figure this out at the same time. We're all trying to learn and get better. So, you know, do it, right? It's like, you know, going, going live, going live is sort of like your ability to open up your sh retail shop in the mall. And then people just start coming in, you know, and, 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 and that's, what's just so, so amazing about it. So appreciate all of you guys. Um, okay. I'll say art by Grigor. Is it Grigor? I think that's what it is. Um, you have another question in order to gain more followers. Is it better to have the account private? No, it is definitely not better to have the account private. That is the worst thing you can do. Um, it's going to make it way, way harder, um, to, to gain followers. Right. That's what I would say. Um, my old painting sell, but I have no avenue for prints and merch. I look forward to working with you all. Yeah, that's awesome. We'd, we'd love to have you on board, obviously, of course. Um, and you guys, you got, you got to be selling prints. You, you like artists can't just be selling originals. You have to be selling prints because you, you you guys need the price point variability you need a zero to 100 100 to a thousand thousand plus like critically important i don't it's not it's just not easy to get there you know with just um with just originals it's just not and like with the range of pricing you are you are in such a better place to take advantage of of your marketing it's sort of it's sort of just crazy so um all right i gotta i gotta put two things here done um, if anybody's got the final question, I will answer it. And then I've got to wrap this thing up because I've got kids that need to be picked up from school, which apparently today is my job, um, which is all good. And I had to go to the Prince Wall, by the way, this week for the first time in my life. That was awesome. Thank you, son. Um, good times. Good times. All right. We will leave it there. Guys, anytime I'm on and going at this, um, any and all questions are, are totally welcome uh, and encouraged. Love being able to answer them. Hope it's helping you guys. Um, and yeah, you can ask anything at any time. Appreciate you all. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, guys.